Tucker Carlson came to Texas. It's March 18th, 2024, and these are your headlines. That's right, conservative commentator and journalist Tucker Carlson took a break from interviewing world leaders and other newsmakers to speak at a fundraiser for the Tarrant County Republican Party on Sunday, focusing on the invasion at the southern border and firing shots at Governor Greg Abbott in the process. Now, the former Fox News host kept his remarks brief, but pointed as he described the outpouring of illegal aliens since President Biden took office to the sold-out crowd at the stockyards. Now, Tucker Carlson has been critical of Governor Abbott's handling of the border invasion in the past. His remarks yesterday showed he hadn't really changed his tune. He said, I know that I'm at the Tarrant County Republican Party event, so I don't want to attack the governor who's a Republican. He said he probably would have voted for him over his Democrat opponents. They went on to say, I just have to say that I don't understand how you can be the governor of a state in 2020 and get invaded and not do anything about it. When later asked by Tarrant County Republican Party Chairman Beau French to rate the governor's performance handling the border crisis, Carlson said, Neville Chamberlain will get a fair shake when judged by history. Ouch. And Carlson also took aim at former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley. He said, I know Nikki Haley well enough to have contempt for her. His remarks also centered on a recent theme in his own reporting, the spiritual battle taking place in America. With the understanding that more than 80% of the time, incumbents that get pushed into runoff elections well, they end up losing in the runoffs. Well, House Speaker Dade Phelan and his allies are working as hard as they can to attempt to raise unprecedented amounts of money in order to keep his seat in the Texas legislature. And according to sources close to the campaign, Phelan is relying on the campaign connections of former Governor Rick Perry in a last-ditch effort to win his House District 21 in Southeast Texas. Rick Perry, who's now a lobbyist in part for the gambling industry, well, he's emerged as one of Phelan's top cheerleaders. He was out at the polls with him. He was, he was holding signs. He's held campaign events for him in his district. But this puts Perry at odds with his former boss, President Donald Trump, and a range of Texas Republican officeholders and conservative groups who have been supporting David Covey, Phelan's opponent, in the contest. Former Rick Perry strategist Rob Johnson has reportedly been retained for close to $250,000 to manage the two-month runoff campaign. Those same sources say that Johnson has been promised another quarter million if Phelan wins as a bonus. And it's believed that R Johnson's role will be announced by Phelan's campaign at a fundraising event at the Austin Club. That's a club close to the Capitol. It's a, a big donor lobbyist uh, meeting spot. And uh, his role will be announced in an effort to reassure those donors and lobbyists that his campaign is doing all right. Other operatives from Perry's network are being approached for roles ahead of the May 28th runoff. Not everyone apparently is willing to take the paycheck. One source told Texas Scorecard several political operatives turned down roles for any money, knowing the downside of a high-profile loss would be that they might never be able to work in Texas again. America is at a crossroads. Now, more than ever, Texas must step up and lead the country. We don't have time to mess around. The only way to save America is with a strong Texas. You and I know this, but so do the enemies of life and liberty. Therefore, you and I have no choice but to stand up and fight. I'm Sarah Gonzalez, and to the enemies of liberty, I say, come and take it. Lastly, three employee resource groups focusing on anti-racism, transgender issues, and LGBTQ matters have kept the Denton-based University of North Texas at the center of an ongoing debate about DEI in higher education. Now, a new investigative report by our own Robert Montoya and Quinn Sullivan show that the university appears to be complying with the new state ban on DEI in higher ed, but there's still more room for reform. In June of 2023, Governor Abbott signed into law a ban on Texas's public universities, establishing DEI offices using DEI criteria in their hiring practices or requiring employees to attend DEI trainings. This is Senate Bill 17. However, the restrictions do not apply to academic instruction, student organizations, admissions, guest speakers, or scholarly research. 
The UNT had shut down explicit DEI-related efforts in compliance with the new law. Universities also shut down the website for the Center for Belonging and Engagement, their replacement for their Division of Institutional Equity and Diversity. These actions showed the university is capable of reform, but the remnants of these programs are now scattered throughout the university, warranting ongoing scrutiny by watchdogs and the media. You can find out more about this investigation and the news of the day at texasscorecard.com.